touching technology in VR isn't really mainstream yet, and it all comes down on whether we're talking about hands, torso, or feet. The most developed, or rather mainstream, type of sensing technology is actually for the torso, with the haptic suit by B-Haptics being compatible with all the games on this list. It actually does what it advertises for and seems to do it pretty well. I'm wearing a full body haptic suit right now and if you touch me I'll feel it in real life on my hand, my face and my chest. I'm literally feeling this right, I'm feeling you vibrating my chest. One of the few negative reviews that I saw on Amazon mentioned the fact that it's hot in it. Of course it's hot in it, it's a haptic suit. You're telling me you have enough money to buy a haptic suit, a VR, a gaming rig, but not enough for a friggin' aircon? Other reviews I saw mentioned the lake of games. Well, okay, but didn't you look at the list before you bought the device? Or were you so excited that you didn't do your research properly and blindly expected it to work with every game? So we already have a legit sensing technology for the torso, which is pretty damn cool, and I believe we'll see more and more games adapted for it over time. Now, let's talk about hands and feet, because that's where things get a little tricky. Let's start with feet. But what does it actually feel like to use VR shoes? I tried them with the demo game that they had available and went through a couple of the simulations. And while many of the surfaces didn't feel like they would in real life, I have to say the water one felt pretty accurate. It did feel like I was splashing around in a puddle of mud. Aha! Negative review! Plus, did you catch the part where the shoe almost came off her leg? Ah, but you know what? That was almost three years ago. These guys had a lot of time to work on improving the design. Can't wait to see what they came up with. All right, well, let's try to look for them. Tackle them shoes. Uh, two years ago, three years ago, three years ago. Huh. How about I'll fil filter it by upload date? Uh, two years ago, two years ago, three years ago. Uh, Google, maybe? No? Three years ago? Still? Okay, well, so these guys have a nice website, but in terms of media content, they disappeared from the face of the interweb. I guess I can kiss my dreams of feeling feet texture okay. goodbye. Getting my feet wet. Uh, getting my feet wet. How cool would it be if I could actually feel the texture of what I'm doing? So next level realism. But I gotta say, I get the fact that they wanted to do universal design for the shoes, but damn, those things are ugly. I just can't see myself running in those shoes, even if they work as advertised. All right. So whereas torso is a clear yes, feet. A clear no. With hands, it's way more complicated. And you can pick it up. And again, you know, it, it feels like you're actually holding a physical object as again, your fingers are restricted when you pick it up. VR gloves limit how much you can flex your fingers based on the object that you want to pick. This is called force feedback. Now, this coupled with applying pressure or vibrations to your fingers or palm makes you feel like you're holding the object. That's called haptic feedback. Both those technologies must work in unison to make you believe like you're holding the object. So there are a bunch of those gloves. Haptex got the most notoriety after this clip by Smarter Every Day. Originally they had a clumsy design, then they made it smaller. They seem to have the most advanced technology of the bunch, but it's not aiming this for gamers. It's aiming it for guys like... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Dexmo Haptic from Asia also incorporates both force feedback and haptic feedback. Sense Gloves seems to be their European competitors. And Menas VR Gloves offer just the haptic feedback without the force feedback. So there is no reason to go into details about any of those gloves because none of them have any compatible games. Well, except the demos their own companies made for them. So yes, the technology works, but getting games to support such luxury products is a big deal. If any of those companies want to be successful, I think they would need to have an entire team contacting game publishers or working on mods to integrate it to mainstream VR games. And not all games will let you do that easily. That might take some time for a company to get a foothold. And if the price is reasonable enough, then they might start to slowly become a luxury VR product, like the haptic suit. But let's imagine for a moment that all games support it and that the price is affordable. Do they feel real? Well, I haven't tried them, but the people who did seemed impressed. 
problem with it is that the first time with those new technology stuff, it's always wow. I would have probably wow too, especially with the developer breathing down my neck. What happens the second time you use it though? The third? The fourth? What about a week? A month? Does it start to feel boring? It's not real touch after all, it's simulated touch. It could feel boring because you might start to feel more and more of the simulation of the touch and not suspend your belief anymore. Who knows, that's a function of time and the specific person using the glove. But I guess that if the haptic feedback is diverse enough, it could be satisfying to use even after the initial excitement. And that very much depends on how sophisticated the glove is. Oh, and what about this? This object, you can rotate it around. Um, although it is unusual when that happens because when your hands go through an object, it doesn't quite grab it properly. So oh yeah, your hand can go right through stuff. The glove ain't gonna hold it back. It's your elbows and shoulders that do the motion and nothing is holding back your elbows and shoulders. But if you're thinking, well, we need something to limit the elbows and shoulders then, some sort of force feedback for them as well. You know what? A whole bodysuit of forced and haptic feedbacks. That's when we fall off the deep end and things get a little too crazy. And you know what the crazy thing is? That there is a company actually doing that. Or rather, there was. Our solution for force feedback is a novel, lightweight exoskeleton that can be worn like a piece of clothing. We call this an exosuit. The exosuit really is the interface between the virtual world and the real world. It's what provides the forces necessary to simulate any virtual environment. You see, the same company that makes this glove, Haptex, was previously known as Exxon VR, and they released this video which people back then went crazy about. Long story short, they decided to focus just on the gloves, because doing the whole full body VR thing, well... This is ridiculous! So look, at the end of the day, we're just not there yet. We're not unboxing the future. In fact, we are so far from being there that we should just take a step back and then we'll realize that we are so far back that we're still using these goofy ass looking things. Heck, why are we even talking about haptic or force feedback? I just want what Uncle Mark promised. I am excited to announce that early next year we're launching hand tracking on Quest. No controllers, no buttons, no straps, no external sensors. Oh, and uh, he delivered. Whoop. What a mess. <laughs> oh yeah, we can, uh, we can create shapes too. Watch this. Yes, it's gonna take some time for the video games themselves to catch up and be compatible with it. So, this is the best gloves at the moment. Your hands. I don't need overpriced, underdeveloped and unsupported solutions. And if you are seriously considering to buy one, then just repeat after this. I don't need overpriced, underdeveloped and unsupported solutions. Alright, well I think that was a scathing enough of an overview. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time you click me.